It is a chill night with a threat of storm as a Viking longship heads to sea. A thousand years ago, a ship like this set out from this bay to discover the new world. The skipper then was a Viking hero named Lifor Eriksson. The skipper now is his direct descendant, Gunnar Egertsson. Gunnar built this ship as a tribute to his ancestor. Next year, he will sail it to America to mark the millennium of that voyage. I thought that uh, there's no one here in Iceland who has the knowledge to build a ship like this. And, uh, and uh, because of that, I started it. If I didn't do it, then uh, it's not going to be done for maybe another thousand years. <laughs> it may seem heroic folly, but in Iceland, Viking heritage is taken very seriously. Even these artists and writers who have hired the ship for an evening cruise can name their ancestors. They still speak the Viking language, almost unchanged over centuries. And according to Dora Isleif's daughter, they've inherited the same determination. The nationalistic view of Iceland is Vikings and you can go anywhere, do anything. Icelanders don't just have a sense of Viking inheritance, they carry the Viking's genes. Almost everyone is directly descended from the Nordic seafarers who settled here in the 9th and 10th centuries. Today it is still the most homogenous society in Europe, and that is propelling Iceland towards its most daring project since discovering the new world. We have this genealogy. And in our company, we have the genealogy of the entire nation centuries back in time. And it's an absolutely miraculous you know, instrument to use in the study of, of genetics of human disease. Kari Stephenson heads Decode, an American Icelandic company set up to map the genes of the entire population. The 250 staff hope to identify the genes responsible for a dozen inherited diseases. It is not just scientific research, it is big business. The pharmaceutical giant, Hoffman La Roche, will pay a $200 million success fee if they succeed. The business idea behind our company is that this knowledge can be turned into new methods to treat and prevent diseases, to alleviate pain, to diminish suffering. And I'm absolutely convinced that it will. This small volcanic island is the one place on Earth where a project like this could take place. The Vikings called it Iceland to scare off rival settlers. Its reputation and isolation kept it free of strangers for centuries. And in this beautiful but harsh land, with its striking features but poor soil, their ancestry became the strongest expression of who they were. There are no great buildings in Iceland that were waiting to become monuments. We had absolutely no great pieces of art, no great paintings, no statues. The only thing we had were the stories we told, the stories we wrote, and then the stories told from the great men of each generation. The stories written in the sagas are still kept in Iceland's university. The centuries-old parchments hold detailed histories of each generation. Decode is now putting these ancient records to modern use. So if we, for example, look up Kauri Stefansson. Your boss? Yeah. And Mr. David Hansson, the Prime Minister, yes. And we can see how they are related. 
Todo Christianson has digitized the genealogy of 580,000 people. His family trees represent 85% of the Vikings and their descendants. And if we click on this lady, for example, she's born in 1787, we get her family tree and we can continue back in time. Now we are in 1180. How far back can you go? Uh, back to the settlement of Iceland. So now our, what we have is a gentleman called Ketil Bjarnason, born in 805, and he was one of the settlers of Iceland. His parents were, uh, uh, his father was a, a small king in Norway. The next link in the medical chain is to trace back family illnesses, mainly through state-held medical records. Researchers will then compare them to DNA samples of 10,000 voluntary blood donors. They believe the cross-sampling will help scientists understand why disease begins and how it is passed to each generation. Such knowledge could revolutionise the treatment of multiple sclerosis, diabetes, Alzheimer's, osteoarthritis or even schizophrenia. But the ethical implications are just as great. Could insurance companies demand this information and deny people a lifetime of protection? Could future generations be classified at birth on the basis of their genes? <laughs> The Church of Iceland doubts they are risks worth taking. The minister at this rural congregation, Kristen Fridfinson, has taken his warnings to the pulpit. He's angry that medical records will be automatically passed to decode unless patients ask to be excluded. Ég veit enga siðfræði nokkur staðar í þessum heimi. Hvorki þá siðfræði sem að Kristin Kirkja hefur bóðað, né þá siðfræði sem að vísendamenn hafa notað og stuðst við út um hinn stóra heim til þess að rannsaka og til þess að gera rétt sem að leifir slíkan óheftan aðgang að leyndustu upplýsingum hvers og eins. Decode insists it will encrypt all data to ensure people's privacy is respected. Kari Stephenson acknowledges a risk of abuse, but he believes it's worth taking. And if we decide that we will not allow the use of this information to create knowledge, for the sake of developing new methods to treat and prevent diseases, that we are then basically sentencing our children and their children to medicine that is going to be of poor quality. And to my mind, that is not elevating the standard in bioethics, it is to, you know, pull it down. But this is not just an issue of privacy. There is also a sense that Icelanders are giving away their heritage. In a community where ancestry is given special reverence, many feel their family trees should not become commercial property. We have nothing against private firms financing research but commercial interests should not lead the road in scientific research that is based on the usage of sensitive information. General practitioner Sigbjörnjan Svensson has decided to defy the government's orders to hand over his patients' records. He says he will only cooperate if patients volunteer to give their private details. I find it very difficult and unethical to give this information away to, the, to a third party that has the exclusive rights to do whatever they want to, whatever research they want to, and sell the result to the highest bidder. Mm -hmm. I, I can't do it. Discoveries like we are trying to do it can never belong to us. They can never belong to the Icelandic population. They belong to the entire humanity. But if we want to make discoveries, we have to face the fact that they have to be financed. Many of Iceland's youth are also worried. 
Dora and her friend Bjorka plan to opt out, preventing their health records being used for a search. I mean, data about me is in there. I'm going to be contributing to something I have no idea where it will lead. Bjorka fears the effect a project centred on genetic purity could have on this small country. Society here is in those is backwards enough. It's, yeah, it's closed enough. It's so. closed enough and, 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 and uh, narrow-minded in, in that sense enough. But this is a really scary, scary thought that, that that would contribute to even more racism and, and, and more xenophobic ideas. Even today, it is easy to spot outsiders. Iceland has a population of only 270,000. Many people have such strikingly similar features that they appear to be from the same family. But like their ancestors, this tiny community is on the brink of momentous discovery. The Prime Minister says it's time for the arguing to stop. This is a scientific experience in a world class, I would say, and uh, I am sure that both for um, our people and the world as a whole, this could be a very special uh, possibilities for Iceland. A thousand years after Vikings found America, their descendants have embarked on a brave new world of science.